Now NASA is scheduled to launch SpaceX Dragon capsule tomorrow from the Kennedy Space Center at around 4.30 in the afternoon. This marks the first time that SpaceX is launching its Falcon 9 rocket with astronauts inside. Also the first time NASA astronauts will take off from U.S. soil in nine years. But weather might cause a problem here. Let's get the latest now with NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. You see the radar there. Administrator Bridenstine, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's good to be with you. Well, the weather's always a, a bit spotty in Florida, especially this time of year. What's the latest you're hearing? I hear there's a 60% chance of scattered thunderstorms. What does that mean for tomorrow? So we have a, a different metric that we look at. We, we take uh, the winds uh, and the sea states and the lightning and, um, and, and precipitation, and we kind of mix them all together into an algorithm. And then we come up with a a probabilistic, uh, what, you know, what is the probability that we're going to actually launch uh, based on the weather? And right now we're showing about 60% favorability for launch tomorrow. So um, it's not 100%, but it's more favorable than unfavorable. So we're still we're still hopeful for a good launch tomorrow. Now, I've covered a couple of these uh, shuttle, sh shuttle launches uh, a long time ago. The last time I was at Kennedy Space Center was STS-134, the penultimate launch of the shuttle. And it, you know, to hear these things take off is so amazing. But I wanted to talk about the significance of the fact that we're again sending uh, astronauts into space from U.S. soil. It's the first time it's happened in nine years. Why is this so important? So this is uh, this is important. Um, this is about American leadership in space. Uh, the president committed uh, when he ran for president that we would launch American astronauts again from American soil, um, and he's been he's been very. Uh, he's been an, an amazing advocate for space in general, whether it's exploration and discovery or national security and defense, of course, the creation of the Space Force. But this is really about America leading, leading a coalition of na nations, not just into low Earth orbit, which is what we're doing tomorrow, but ultimately going all the way to the moon and onto Mars. So this is about American leadership. And the president really sees this as uh, part of the package of making America great again. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people criticize uh, the Space Force. Why do we need military in space? This is just President Trump playing with his toys, things like that. But, you know, President Reagan didn't get the same type of criticism when he talked about Star Wars or the Strategic Defense Initiative. This really isn't anything new. It's just a return to American leadership, right? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things. Ronald Reagan did get criticized for the Star Wars program. In fact, it's called the Strategic Defense Initiative. That's what Ronald Reagan called it. And his opponents called it Star Wars. They said it was provocative, that it would be um, that that we couldn't achieve it, that it was too technologically complex or too expensive and that it would ultimately be destabilizing. The, the reality, though, is that Ronald Reagan, as as you know, an, an amazing communicator as he was, when they started calling it Star Wars, he owned it. He said, OK, that's right. We're going to call it the Star Wars program. And of course, the Star Wars program was built on the credibility of Apollo. But just as we as we think about Star Wars for a second, remember, we were in the height of the Cold War mm -hmm. and 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 people said that we couldn't achieve this missile defense shield in space. But there was a nation out there who believed we could achieve it. And that nation was the Soviet Union. They believed the United States could do that. Why? Because just 12 or 13 years before that, they saw American astronauts walking on the surface of the moon. This nation has an ability to do extraordinary things in space. And because the Soviet Union saw that, they invested heavily into their countermeasures. And ultimately, it was a piece of the puzzle that resulted in the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, so, yes, people belittled it. We didn't hardly spend any money on the Strategic Defense Initiative, but our opponents did, and ultimately it was to our advantage to do that. But I will tell you, the Space Force is something whose time has come. We have very hostile activities in space right, right now, jamming, spoofing, dazzling, hacking. There's countries out there with anti-satellite missiles, countries out there with co-orbital anti-satellite devices already in space. It is a very, very dangerous area. <laughs> and, um, and if NASA is going to continue to do stunning achievements in space, we have to make sure that space is safe. No, and that's it, what the Space Force is all about. It, this is such an important symbolic thing. Just for you, just as you mentioned, I mean, 
you know, I, I should say in hindsight, people understand the importance of what Reagan did with SDI and Star Wars. At the time, you're right, he was criticized. But I think we'll have some more revisionist history from some of these critics of Star Wars uh, years down the road as well. And we look forward to the launch tomorrow. We'll be watching, holding our breath, wishing everybody the best. Uh, and uh, Jim, great to see you. Thank you so much for your time. And congratulations to NASA and to SpaceX. Great public-private par uh, partnership so on this thing, too, which is another important aspect of it. Absolutely. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel, now in 65 million homes. Get Newsmax TV on all the major cable systems or go to NewsmaxTV.com and click on the Find Newsmax tab to locate us. Remember, Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.